All right, what is up guys? Jared Campisi coming back at you with another track and field video. Today we're gonna to be covering how to run a faster curve. But before we get into that, I have a huge announcement to make. If you're watching this video, then the first ever J Camp Fit like official launch of gear is now live on my website. I'll put a link on the on the screen right here. It'll also be the first description. And basically we have two shirts that we're launching. This is one of them. It's a signature gray, uh, gray performance long sleeve. Um, I'm wearing a size medium. It fits me perfectly. I'm 5'10", 175 pounds for reference. Um, we also have a sizing guide on there. Um, so you'll see all the stuff on the website is regarding sizing. But basically we adjusted the sizes from our first t-shirt launch um, because they were a little bit small we were getting feedback from people so um, we bumped them all up about 10 10 percent larger so now they should fit true to size so whatever size you normally wear if you're a medium in a Nike t-shirt or whatever you should be a medium in this again I'm wearing a medium this is how it fits me minimal branding it's cotton with a little bit of elastane so there's some stretch there they're really high quality they're an athletic fit um, it's a long sleeve I like to always pull my sleeves up and this is how it fits me live inspired on the back motto of the brand beautiful shirt you guys will love them I also have the black t-shirt on oh and one other thing they're, they're all tagless so it's just the jcam fit uh, brand and the website and the size that's it there's no tags on these um, this is the uh, short sleeve t-shirt so this is the signature t-shirt it's got the jcam fit the name of the brand the logo the running man logo has a nice little tag on the sleeve again this is a size medium and when you first get them they might be a little big but once they go through a wash a couple times they will shrink a little bit so we put this through one time only and it will probably shrink a little bit more but again a little bit more room in these so that you guys can wear them around not just for athletic activities but if you just want to wear them out around the town stuff like that and again live inspired on the back and same thing with this it's a cotton elastane blend so there's a little bit of stretch in there so if you even wanted to get a smaller size if you want to rock those guns um, you can do that too so um, again these shirts are now live on the website it's the first link in the description below and um, we're gonna be the first 25 customers are gonna get um, limited edition poly bags and limited edition um, J Camp Fit transfer stickers. I forgot to grab them, they're in my bag. Maybe I'll just put a <laughs> picture up on the screen. Um, also, we are gonna be donating a percentage of all proceeds to Actions for Healthy Kids. Um, it's a foundation that is something that we wanna support. It's basically helping to get kids active at a younger age. Um, they help get healthier food options for lunches and for breakfast in schools. They also help put together activities and help get kids moving at a younger age um, right now two in every three kids will be obese by the time they reach adulthood and it's something we are very passionate about like helping and so we're literally gonna just take a percentage of these proceeds we're gonna donate it straight to that foundation I will put a description below if you want to check out more about what that foundation is I'll also throw up a little picture here of their front page of their website um, but yeah this is something we feel we feel very strongly about and um, everyone talks about healthcare healthcare we have to fix healthcare I think we have to fix health. And so that's something that we feel very strongly about, helping people be more active, helping people be more healthy. And the healthier you are, the happier you are, and the better it's gonna be. So, and this is something we've been doing, you know, for about two years now, making these track and field videos for you guys to help you guys improve and, um, you know, supporting this brand and buying these shirts and wearing them and supporting the brand we're just going to be reinvesting back into the channel um, back into the gear i mean that's going to allow us to buy those joggers the hoodies um, we've got a women's line going right now we have samples coming in i mean i'd like to do short tights i'd like to do some tank tops for summer but we can't really do any of that unless you guys buy the product so it's basically this is your company like we consider you guys a part if you're watching this video we consider you be a part of this company with us together this is a community that we've built around track and field and about our love for fitness and um, yeah it's really gonna be dependent on the support we get from you guys so um, yeah the more support you show us the more we're gonna show you guys with continuing to make educational content for you and help you guys in everything that you're doing so go snag a shirt and rock it for us and let's get into this video on how to run a faster curve all right so now we get to the fun part of the video how to run a faster curve so there's actually quite a bit involved when it comes to running in a curve. Um, so we're gonna cover every aspect of what you should be doing on the curve, from the different events, to the entry level, to the top of the curve, coming off the curve, everything that basically involves running on a curve. So first, let's talk about a couple of things when it comes to curve running. Where should you be in the position in your lane? First off, 
the fastest lane in the track is actually whatever the most outer lane is. So some tracks have eight, eight lanes, some have nine, some have six. Whatever the furthest lane out is, that's the fastest lane on the track. So a lot of people always want those inside lanes because you can see people. They're actually the slowest lanes on the track because um, the more straight the curve is, which means the further out you are, the faster it's gonna be. When you're running on a curve, you're actually fighting centripetal force, which is trying to push you out of the curve, okay? That's the reason why you lean into the curve, because you're trying to counterbalance that effect. That's the reason why indoor track, the 200 meter tracks, where they have tighter curves and you're running more curves, that's why it's so much slower than outdoor track, where you have these big, long, beautiful straightaways and short, uh, shorter uh, curves, or I mean, longer curves, wider curves, okay? Also, all track curves are not the same. This track has a very long straight stretch, and some tracks have, so that means these curves are gonna be a little bit tighter, okay? Um, some tracks have shorter straight stretch and wider curves. It's all kind of diff different preference on the tracks themselves. Um, and also, the size of the lane changes too. Um, I'm pretty sure they built wider lanes on these tracks, which is really nice but some tracks have tighter lanes. So there's all kinds of different things that come into play here. Um, but let's talk about just general curve running. So first off, if you're in lane one, you really don't wanna be hugging the inside of your lane, okay? Um, usually there's some sort of, uh, what's that thing called? The barrier. Yeah, there's, there's some sort of barrier that usually runs around these. It's about this high, and that's to keep people away from the, the inside of the track. So if you step on that, which I have, you can pretty much end your track career or you can roll your ankle very badly. So anytime you're running in lane one, make sure you're not hugging the inside of your lane. I like to stay about here or even to the middle of lane one um, for a couple of reasons. One, um, if you're in the middle of your lane or even towards the outside of your lane, it's gonna push people out further to pass you if you're running a four x four or something like that, even a four by eight or anything like that. You, can, you actually have a step or two that you can push people out before they can pass you. Second, no one's allowed to pass you on the inside. So if someone tries to pass you on the inside, you can actually force them off the track legally and you're not gonna get disqualified. It's, it, that's on them, okay? The next thing is why you don't wanna hug this, the front of the curve is um, if you actually take two consecutive steps on the line, say you're running in lane two and you're hugging the curve too much, if you take two consecutive steps, that's one, that's two, and a judge sees it, you can actually be disqualified for that, okay? So if you're running and you hit the line once, no big deal, but if you're running and you hit it again in a couple of times, especially in big races, uh, Big Tens, NCAAs, Olympic trials, uh, nationals, all those events, there's judges that are watching for that kind of stuff. So if you step on the line, boom, you're done, okay? So, so definitely in lane one, don't hug the, the curve too much. Um, I'd say in lanes two, three, or so one through three, I'd say you wanna be somewhere here towards the inside of the lane or even the middle of the lane depending on how tight the turns are okay um lanes uh four five six and out and all that you can hug a little bit closer to the lane but again the difference between running here and running here isn't gonna change your time that much okay if at all so don't risk running so close to the lane that you're gonna step on that inside lane on lane one and roll your ankle or you're gonna step on the lane and get disqualified okay so, when it comes to turn running, what kind of form should you be in? What kind of position should you be in? Basically, as I mentioned first off, shorten your strides a little bit and make sure you're turning over because as you're running on the curve, the track is curving as you run. So the bigger your stride is, the more you're gonna be floating to the outside of your lane as you're running that curve and the more you're gonna have to continue to fight to stay back in. If you shorten your stride, now you're staying on the curve and you're making it more kind of like a straight line, okay? So definitely turn over a little bit more when you're coming into the curve and when you're on the curve. The next thing is lean a little bit into the curve. Your body should do this naturally, so don't overdo this. Your left arm, what I like to do is keep my left arm normal, right? So I'm leaning into the curve, my left arm's doing what it normally does. My right arm is now, instead of running straight like this, now I'm leaning a little bit into the curve, so my right arm is starting to come a little bit across my body. Again, don't overcompensate on this. When you come into the cur curve, your body should naturally, you should do this naturally. You should lean a little bit, you should lean into the curve a little bit, and you should let your 
arm come across your body just a little bit, okay? This is what worked very, very well for me. I used to run a, a really badass curve uh, back in high school and college, and that's why I was uh, the third leg on the four by one, because I ran a really, really good curve, okay? So, let's talk about event-specific curve running. As a 200 meter runner, you're starting on the curve, okay? So what I, what I used to do with my blocks is I would angle them towards wherever part of the curve I wanted to run on, okay? So instead of having your blocks like this and angling them out where you're gonna be fighting the curve immediately in this direction, what I did is put my blocks a little bit more over here and then I'm angling towards the top of that curve, okay? So now I'm running towards that part of the curve that I wanna be running on, which is that first third of the curve, okay? So same thing as you get outside whatever part of the curve you're running on in the 200, that's how you set up your blocks. And again, make sure that you're running towards the inside of the lane, but not so close that you're gonna step on the line in the 200. Also in the 200, once you hit that first 30 to 40 meters hard, and you reach your float phase, you're saving your kick for coming off that curve, and that's when you actually float towards the outside of the lane and make a, as straight a line as possible, and maybe I'll show you that when we get over there. And that's when you start to open up your stride and go to big arms. That actually happens in every event, whether it's running the four by one, whether it's running the, the 200, whether it's the second turn on the four, uh, 400. Um, it's always good to kind of cut the turn off at the end and float out a little bit towards the outside of your lane so you can start running straighter sooner, okay? Um, another thing is four by four. <clears throat> so when it comes to four by four running, you're gonna pretty much be in your lane at this point. So as I said, what I like to do is run pretty much in the middle of the lane, okay? The reason for that is if somebody tries to pass me, I can, I, I'm allowed two steps out, okay? So you wanna push them out so that they're now running harder around the turn to pass you, they're running a longer distance, okay? I used to use this to my advantage all the time. I would purposefully slow down a little bit to bait people into passing me, making them think that I'm starting to slow down and make them pass, try to pass me on the curve. And then I would speed up and step out a little bit so that they had to run a longer distance and they weren't ready for that. And a lot of times I'd break people on the curve like that, okay? There's all kinds of intricacies when it comes to track and field and knowing these little kind of things will really help go a long way, okay? Okay, so now I'm just gonna run the first part of the curve so you can see what kind of adjustments I make, how I change my body, how I approach that first part of the curve. Then we'll show you at the top of the curve what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, where I'm looking, and then we'll show you how I come off the curve. So here we go. So these curves are even tighter than I thought. So one thing you should be doing when you're at a meet is doing some striders into the curb and feeling how tight these curves are. If I was in one, two, or three on this track, I'd be running in the middle, in the middle of my lane, and maybe even out here a little bit more. Because I felt like, even in lane two, I was a little close, I was about here, and I could really feel my inside leg having to turn a lot to compensate for that centripetal force pulling me out, okay? So that's why you wanna try out these things at the different tracks that you're at and see how it feels to you, okay? So now we'll look at the second half of the curve. So, a couple of things. One, staying more towards the center of lane two felt way better. Two, I'm looking down about five feet in front of me and that's what I'm using to make sure I'm running in the correct part of my lane. The rest, when it comes to everyone else in the race, use your peripheral vision and your ears to feel where everyone is. You shouldn't be looking around to see what people are doing. You should be paying attention to where you are in your lane and you should be using your peripheral vision and your senses to feel what's happening around you, okay? Then, that's the entry into the curve and the halfway through. As soon as I pass that halfway to three quarter mark through the lane, now I'm finishing, making sure I'm in the right spot. And then when I come off the curve over here, now I'm starting to adjust my place in the lane and I'm starting to get ready to push hard off the curve, stand up tall, 
and now I'm looking through the curve into where I'm running, okay? So you're gonna see from the first three quarters of the curve, I'm here, I'm leaning in, I'm looking where I'm running, and then when I reach this, the last quarter of the curve, now I'm starting to look up to where I'm going, and I'm starting to lengthen my stride, relax, and push off the curve, okay? Slingshotting myself off that curve, okay? That's where you make your move on the curve, coming off that curve into that home stretch, where you can then go back into your nice, big strides, powerful, relaxed, and striding down, that, down the straightaway, okay? So watch for that in the last part of this curve here. So, yeah, that actually felt good. Staying again towards the middle of my lane. This curve's a little tighter than most, so that's what feels best for me on this track. And then continuing to lean into the curve, looking about five feet ahead of me to make sure I'm staying in the correct position in my lane. And then as I approach the end of the curve, I slowly start to bring my gaze up and look where I want to finish, which is just slightly to the outside of my lane and that's where I'm really starting to dig in, slingshot off that curve, come up big and tall and relax, nice and relaxed face, shoulders, and open up my stride coming off the curve. All right guys, so there you go. That's a video on the art of curve running. There's a lot that goes into it, so definitely start practicing this stuff during your practice. Go to the meets, feel out the curves, and start applying this, this kind of stuff that I talked about in this video. If you have friends or family that are running track and field and are trying to improve, share this video with them. Uh, if you like the gear and you like what we're doing, make sure to support us, support the channel, support the apparel, support the brand, and uh, you know, I'll head over to the website, grab some products, and uh, let's all do this together as a great community and promote health and fitness and being happy. So, woo, I hope that's helpful. If you have comments, drop them down below. Whatever videos you guys wanna see, let us know. And um, until next time, stay fast, my friends. Peace.